could now google pornography now had earphones i could now get under the sheets and nobody would know and unfortunately on august that same year when i was in home three my mom was diagnosed with stage four cancer breast cancer it had spread all over her body and within a month she had passed on and now the whole masturbation issue it now became a coping mechanism So I started struggling with these other things, but at the same time, I had gone through a lot of rejection, even in the area of dating. So I, there was this need in me that I needed to be loved. But the kind of love I was looking for was the type of all the wrong places in all the wrong people. And because of that first encounter with sex at, at, in campus, every relationship that I would get was physical. It was sexual oriented kind of relationships and they would really mess me up and I remember I fell for this guy when I was in form 2 uh, not form 2 when I was in second year campus it was an on and off relationship because now that everybody in campus is having boyfriends and girlfriends so you also want to have a boyfriend so that you can stop being lonely and all that so it was an emotionally toxic relationship this guy used to just one minute break up with me the next minute he wants me back so it was a roller coaster of ups and downs ups and downs and it, it really really drained me emotionally and i remembered when one day i had now decided you know what you're going to part ways after he had done something that was so so bad to me and i remember i was like now we are going to part ways and i didn't even tell him anything i just went quiet and i remember i really cried because of what he had done and uh, I decided you know what that's it so I started getting sick like some two three weeks later with a pika, you know vomiting puking here and there and then I was feeling really bad in my stomach so I thought that I was having amoeba issues and all that so I was like ah, maybe I need to take medication because this could be amoeba so I decided, you know what, let me consult her with my friends. And then my friends would tell me, no, 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 Nash, don't self-medicate. It is not right to self-medicate. You need to go to the doctor. And I was like, ah, okay, I'll go see a doctor. So I was really feeling bad. And then a friend of mine who was living next door, in the hostel next door, she was like, um, Nash, have you taken a pregnancy test? I was like, no, I can't be pregnant. I mean, I used e-pills after we had i was with him so they were like nash seriously she told me nash seriously you need to take a pt test i was like what i don't think i'm pregnant but when the thought of pregnancy came to me i really tensed really tense sana i really tensed up and i was like why well, i need to take and i remember i saw positive two lines and i was shocked I remembered when I saw the two positive lines, I got high. I, I drank and I smoked. I used to smoke weed at that point in campus now. And my relationship with God at that point was really strained out. I loved God, but I was like, can he really forgive me for everything I've done? I've grown distant from him. But now when I found out I was pregnant, I made my decision to get rid of the pregnancy out of the emotions I was feeling at the moment. I was so mad at the guy. Like, I was bitter towards him. What I forgot is that emotions do change. And I remember when I got high and my friends were like, what are you going to do? What are you going to do now that you're pregnant? And I was like, I'm going to get rid of it. And they were like, we support you. We support you. There's no friend who questioned my decisions. I was like, that's what you decided. We'll support you. And I went to a certain chemist in school, I bought the pills, and I went to the dormitory. And I took them as they instructed me, and I never even forget the name of the pills, I never forget the shape of the pills. And I took them, and I remember I just could not believe what I was doing. So I got high on weed, I smoked weed, and then, so that I could get the courage to do it all. And then, the pain began. Oh, it was so much pain. So
so much pain. I remember I was taking painkillers that I was prescribed for once a day. I was taking even then thrice a day. The pain was torturing me and then the emotions soon caught up with me, the psychological thing. You know, as I was doing this, I was googling to see if it was a safe decision to make. But one thing I can advise anyone out there, what Google tells you and reality are two different things. Google did not tell me about the emotional and psychological effects of abortion because I was really feeling condemned like, Nash, what are you doing? You're killing an innocent life. I used to feel that and I used to feel so guilty. I felt so much guilt. And then for some reason, that's when I used to notice pregnant women. I would notice children, toddlers. And then when I would take the newspaper headlines, abortion, the biggest murder industry. And I would read and I would be like, what am I doing? And I remember I just started sinking slowly into depression. And then at that same time, I ran away from God. As much as I loved God and all that, that was the time that I became a true prodigal daughter. I just ran away from the presence of God. And I remember it hurt me so much. But I was like, God can never forgive me for killing an innocent life. So I ran away from the presence of God. This is something I can tell everyone. God will never abandon you. God will never leave you. It is people who leave God. It is people who go out from God and they go. But God will never leave you, no matter what you do. So I, God never left me. I left God. And I remember that is the time that I started to go out for raving and drinking. I will drink. I will go out to party and drink, smoke do anything and everything from shisha from drinking alcohol from smoking weed eating with cake or with cookies and all that i now went out of control because of the guilt and the that was and the guilt and the shame that was fueling me and the condemnation for ending an innocent life and i remember what even my grades in school they started falling because i used to get an upper second that semester I got a second lower. I just scored an average because not because I didn't know the answers, but I had no confidence. My confidence was taken away by the process. And I remember I something in me changed when I began the abortion to the time that I ended the abortion. I was I was two different people. Something in me died and died with that abortion. And that is why any lady who has gone through abortion, it is usually a very, very, very bad process in that it affects somebody in ways that you never expected it affects you emotionally psychologically and all that and most people will never talk about that they glorify abortion but most of them they are being fueled by guilt because of having procured an abortion themselves and then they want to comfort themselves by seeing others procuring abortion to try and show that they are not the only ones so what saved me at that point from sinking further into depression was the long holiday. So I came back home, I cut off from my friends, I cut off from all that and I started now putting my life together. I was like, I can't continue like this. I need to put myself back together. So when I came back to school, now I'm in third year, I now started studying hard. I was like, hey, I really flopped in second year. I need to study hard. At this time also, I had tried dating but I used to face a lot of rejection. The guys would just refuse me. But I thank God right now, God ans God showed me why that used to happen. I used to face so much rejection. And I was like, what? Well, is it that I'm not beautiful? Is it that I'm not good? Because I would try to be good, but still the guy will leave me. And now when I got to that day, I was like, I'm not dating anymore. But again, there is this guy who came along to my life and he became my friends with benefits. And funny enough, when I never used to bring commitment, a guy would stick around because he stuck around the whole of third year. But every time I would try and get committed, the guy would not want to commit. Or just, and so I started wondering, why is it that I can stay with a friend with benefits, but I cannot stay with a boyfriend? And I started realizing something is wrong. This is not normal. Why is it that as long as I'm not in a committed relationship, I can be... Okay, but the moment I try a relationship, it just, something happens and I can't be, the relationship would go on and my relationships used to end at a certain pattern. There was a certain pattern in my life and I wondered why. So I used to ask, am I bewitched? Am I, what is going on? So 
we stayed with that guy for third year and fourth year there was no commitment so he stuck around and i remember i used to really question myself a lot why why was that happening but anyway i did finish fourth year did my project and i graduated and now when i graduated that was in 2016 i decided my graduation party that's the last time i'm going out to party i want a new life i want a new leaf i have partied the whole of campus i now want a new leaf i'm not liking the life i live so deep down my inner man was screaming for change yeah even though physically i was like i didn't have the willpower you know now i have a i have a bushon under my sleeve i have masturbation i have pornography i have sex sexual relations they were all in me and now i was like i need a new start i don't want to have a boyfriend i don't want any of these things i want a new start and in 2017 after my my graduation party i never partied again i wanted to change my life completely